Hello folks, we uh, decided to make this video because there's an epidemic. <laughs> there's, uh, there's, a, there's a large number of people out there, more than ever before, that are actually using typewriters. They're not just collecting them, they're using them. Which we, is good. That's, that's great. We predicted that about 14 years ago, that yep. eventually the, the meaty part of the curve <laughs> would contain typists right. more than it did collectors, and that's where we're at. What's happening now is every single machine that can be found is being dragged out of every barn, basement, and sunken <laughs> ship and put into use. And uh, people are having a lot of trouble producing, what shall I say, acceptable copy or, or having a positive experience with their typewriters. And I've got to tell you, that's usually not the typewriter's fault going to be some uncomfortable moments here in this. Right. So let's, the, just, let's yeah. just let that sink in. Yeah. I, I'm not blaming everybody. I'm just saying <laughs> that just saying. it's very possible that technique is a problem. So now that we've let that sink in for a moment, I just want to tell you that typing class is gone in schools. Yep. And it's been we, gone for we years. All learned, we learned people of our generation and earlier generations had to take a class in typing and it was on standard size office machines, and it was grueling. That's right. And, and size things like posture and form and yep. hand position. Your hands were sore, and if you had to write in a class after that, Not cool. it was it was <laughs> tough. Yep. And uh, we did it. And today's classes in keyboarding are just not conducive to producing good typists. So. Yep. A so, computer key is, a, is an on-off device. That's when right. When the contact closes, it sends a signal. If it opens, it stops. And typewriter keys right. just don't work that way. That is an analog device. Right. And if given the opportunity, it will mess up. Yep. And depending on how your typewriter or typewriters are made, they'll mess up differently. So, first thing we want to say... Is uh, it's probably a good idea for you to get one of these old typing textbooks. Now, Absolutely. you see, you see lots of these around. Uh, you see them on eBay and at booksellers. I recommend getting an older one because it'll be more about building finger strength Absolutely. and repetition and, and speed in the common letter combination. Right, and you know, people say, "Well, you know, I like having a dog, but I like my dog so much better now that we went to." classes together, obedience classes, well, why don't you have the same experience with your typewriter? Yeah, you, you're, you get along with your dog better because you finally spent enough time with it for you to understand each other and for it to learn it should listen to you. Right. Well, that, <laughs> that's not, that, that's not on there. that thing doesn't listen particularly well, although it is pretty obedient as far as typewriters go. <laughs> um, we just ran that one through the ringer a little while ago, and I couldn't make it screw up to save my life. And I typed pretty badly on it on purpose. <laughs> it's pretty fast, yep. Yeah. It's, I, rare, it's rare that we, you're going to get to see us actually demonstrate typing badly. Yeah, you're, yeah. hang on for that, folks, if that can keep you going. At, uh, if you're not already yeah. gone at 3 minutes and 20 seconds into <laughs> this, I don't know. Yeah, I just want to point out something in this book right here, though, uh, where it says crowding. Any word occupying? This is, uh, uh, this is the, the part on uh, international typewriter competition rules. Uh, blah, blah. However, if your typewriter is poorly adjusted or the table on which it stands is subject to any vibration, crowding and piling of letters may not be your fault. May not be. So there's something else to think about. First of all, when you, when you get set up, well, let's take a look at this book here. Your new imperial. You need to do what this, this lady is doing here. You need a sturdy table so the machine can't move around. You need to have it at the right height. Look at, look at where her arms are and her hands look are. Look at the angle of her forearms. That is not the same relationship that you will find in computer desks to the yep. keyboard. That is higher. Yeah, if you sit with a typewriter lower than that, you're going to pound the keys. Because you're going to use more of your arm and less of yep. your hands. You're going to be bending your elbows right? to hit the keys rather than your wrists and your fingers. So that's what that needs to look like. Now maybe, maybe uh, you're you know a different height. Here's a little different perspective of somebody. But again, notice that angle of the arms from the elbows up. Get yourself Palms down by the yeah, keyboard. Get yourself oriented that way. Okay. Next thing to know. Here, here's an interesting thing, and this is in the. Uh, Beginner's keyboard manual comes with the Imperial Portables in the 60s. 
Uh, there are two methods of operating the typewriter keyboard. One is a simple method, which you will enjoy following here. The other is just any old method, resulting generally in a fumble-fisted effort with one <laughs> finger of each hand. Jack Nar. Yeah, Jack Nar. <laughs> The simple method is easier because when you have mastered it, no mental effort is acquired and the physical effort is reduced to a minimum. It's easier to type with all your fingers with only two fingers. But you have to learn to do it the right way. Yep. And this whole pile of manuals that you see here, all for all these different brands, Remington and uh, Royal, that's for Alpinas, but they're really AMCs, Groma, Corona, all these tell you to use the staccato method of touch. All the same. To punch the keys like they were a hot iron, pull your finger away. If I go into this book here, uh, this one's kind of falling apart, Touch Typing in 10 Lessons. Well, I, I question that, but <laughs> if I go into here, are you seeing double? That is, do your strokes make two impressions instead of one? If so, the answer is not get a different typewriter or adjust your machine. It's <laughs> Use less pressure on your strokes. A quick staccato stroke will print without shadows. Bounce your finger on the key. Do not stay glued to it. Again, don't follow the key all the way down. We're talking about technique here, folks. Right. And following the key all the way down is what's known as bottom typing. Yep. Now, hanging on. Hanging on or bottom typing. Right Now, this Halda service manual here talks about bottom typing. And whereas older machines, older manuals, don't permit it, in this manual here for the Halda, we see that they actually make adjustment to allow it. But a person who hits the keys rapidly and pulls their fingers away is not going to have the same experience on the machine if it's adjusted for bottom typing. Right. So, and first of all, the, what, what can you take away from all the stuff I've just thrown at you? Well, the answer is... You need to make sure, first, that your fingers are strong and that you're Absolutely. capable of typing on a typewriter the right way. Second of all, figure out what your normal touch is and whether that's going to work on the typewriter in front of you. You might need to get a different machine. If, yep. you, if you've got really strong hands, portables might not be for you. You might want something like a Woodstock number 4 or right. 5. A big standard you could blaze on. It gives more resistance. Yeah. Now, Dave's got some examples of... Uh, yeah, let's... All right. Some technical examples over here that we can look at. Let's see how much of a mess we let's, can make. Uh, we, yeah. Okay, just, here's something. Here's something. What, what might that be? Yeah. We've you, all heard about this machine. You get to see all kinds of examples of stuff in our videotapes. This yeah. is the Mighty Generation 3000. A much maligned machine in all of the guises, whether it be Rover or Generation or whatever. Yeah, boy, these are, these are universally hated. Yeah, they are, and uh, I don't, I'm not sure why. So let's see, if, let's see what we can do with this thing. Let's try just some random galloping typing, like the, the manuals mention. Crowd the escape, and oh, look, I'm getting shadowing. I'm locking keys. Jamming. Right. Huh. Well, now, is that the machine's fault, or is it my fault? Well, just focus on that. I'll show you how fast this thing actually is when I'm typing the right way. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> I jammed, too. There we go. It's faster than I am. Hmm. No skipping. Nope. No skipping. No, no anything. That's just, and let me show you, that's just the spacing of the font. See? But if I gallop, see, there's some ghosting and some movement right. of the type. There's crowding right there. I just crowded, I just crowded those yeah. two letters. Now I got to tell you, folks, these typewriters, at least the first, uh, I don't know, first two years they were coming into the United States. Every single one of them came with, a, came with a type alignment proof sheet out of the factory, and they're aligned. Yep. But that's not to say that you ought to be satisfied if you, you know, spent, I don't know what was it in those, in those lousy catalogs. These are $129 something or something like that. Like yeah, that. That's, that's a lot of money. You spend that, and you can't type on it. Well, you know, you're going to start to question whether or not it's the machine's fault or it's your fault. Well... It's not the best machine in the world, it's not the but best you can machine. learn to type on it with the correct motion, and it will work. Right. 
I'll tell you, this machine, brand new out of the box, is every bit as good as one of those old little flat Royals that you'll find from the 60s that's pounded out. Yep. Absolutely. Okay? Now we're going to take a look. I'm going to swing around here to the other side okay. here. We're going to take a look at, there's a familiar typewriter. Yep, this is a Smith Corona Galaxy. This is the earliest incarnation of it, where it just has the Smith Corona label here, and it says Galaxy on the on the paper table or the eraser shield there. Yep. So this is a real early 6 series machine, mm -hmm. and let's remember that the 5 series machines were advertised by Smith Corona as the world's fastest portable typewriter. But yet we see people uh, having problems with this machine, and I and we'll start off by saying that, and this is adjustment manual for all five series machines, which is the series before this, yeah. Yep, yep. And th those are readily available and easy to find. They start with having you get the machine and make sure it's an adjustment. But very quickly in the escapement section, they talk about the speedy galloping typist who crowds the escapement. Mm -hmm. So right here, there is an, uh, they're talking about trying to adjust a machine to a typist's style. You get the machine in factory condition, in factory adjustment, make sure nothing's worn or broken, and then you're going to try to correct for it. Okay, and they, get, and they go through the methods of trying to do that, and basically what they're talking about, let me just show you something. We'll just talk about something about escapement here. If you could just zoom in. So when I press a key, the type slug comes up here, and you notice the carriage advances and the type slug prints. Now, as, as the type slug and the type bar comes back, the escapement resets. Now, I'll let you listen. Listen. So any bouncing beyond that point, and the actual measurement down there is 7 sixteenths of an inch, so it's a tiny mm -hmm. adjustment. Any rebounding of a type bar will make, a, will make it ghost or double print. And I'm bottom typing this right now. Look at, look at what I'm doing. Okay. So I'll tell you right now, folks, that typewriter is not out of adjustment. No, this thing is mint. I, I, it just faded because it's doing the outgassing plasticky thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, they talk about that here. And uh, if we go on, there's a statement rack there. And uh, here they talk about the world's fastest portable. Touch adjustments must be considered. And there are six points of touch tension adjustment to the 5 and then the 6 series, which is essentially mechanically identical inside to that. And all of these things are available to adjust the touch to the individual user. That's and right. That is, that is important. And I want to so you got to know how to do that as, as a serviceman or have access to this material. Right, and again... Right, here, to me, make, yeah. to customize that machine for you if the particular typewriter you're talking about, if it isn't one of these, has those adjustments at all. Right. This paragraph right here where you, you've already established the factory settings on a machine that you're going to service. Quote, Average typists get the best results on machines adjusted to factory standards. Above, we refer to the hang-on, follow-through, and speedy but erratic typists for whom often we are called upon to make special escapement adjustments. Here are a few hints for dealing, listen to this, here are a few hints for dealing with these troublesome operators. Yeah. Operators. Uh-huh. Bad typists. Apply, bad, no. Apply them in sequence of elimination and on a trial and error basis. It is extremely important that you, the service, the service man. man, work directly with the user. If the user is reluctant to come in, explain that everyone has their own typing techniques and that yours very likely being different than their technique of typing, the machine adjusted to operate properly for you but might not function 100% for them. So, so there's an acknowledgement. what you just heard there is, is a parallel in a way of the Halda manual over there in that it is possible with some typewriters, maybe many typewriters, to make adjustments for the typist style. That should tell you that it's probably unlikely 
that any typewriter you pick up will respond perfectly to you using a fixed technique. Right. So. Look at that, I can move the machine. Yeah. So you're not going to get into your car and drive it the same way you would drive a U-Haul. <laughs> okay, you know, going around a certain corner, the car's I... going to... The car is going to make the corner. The U-Haul is going to tip over. All right? You can't use them the same way. I crowded that one good. Yep. They talk in the manual here about uh, the speedy but galloping typist having one type bar rising and hitting the escapement trip point just as the other one passes That's the level. That's right. The X zone. Right. And so that is a, you know, especially when you type words like the... See, right. I just did it. Yep. Look what I did. Yep. I did that. The machine didn't do That's that. That's right. I That's did right. that. That's technique. Let's. If we had this machine, if we weren't trying to mess up this machine, we had it at the right spot, you know. We could blaze it's on It's been it. proven that this machine types properly. So you have to have an even stroke. Yep. Equal strength on all your fingers. You do not need a to. A steady rhythm. Yeah. Remember, hot iron. Yeah. Now, Ooh. I've told this story before. I'll tell it again. George Baker, a uh, guy who I had the chance to meet and interview shortly before he passed away, started selling typewriters with his dad in uh, 1930. His dad had sold typewriters once before and got out of the business. I got back in uh, selling Royals just at the time that Royal went to segment shift. You all know that machine. It's a Royal with the glass side. Mm -hmm. C. We call it the SX. Yep. His dad knew that if you went into an office... You could sell the typewriter, the Royal, by varying methods. For instance, if you went into an office where you had machines with individual type bar bearings like Monarchs or L.C. Smiths, <laughs> uh, he could ask the typist to be excused from the typewriter, have the boss over, type crazily on the machine <laughs> with a deliberately unsteady rhythm and make the machine pile and skip and do all sorts of unsightly things. Like this. And then, and then demonstrate the royal that he just happened to have with him. <laughs> let it type nicely. So the boss is going to think, wow, my correspondences could go out look like, looking like that. So we know that it's possible to deliberately do that and it was used as a sales method around 1932. Yeah. yeah, the royal guys were doing it. So we, I ju we just keep saying these things over and over again to try to get you to understand that there's a chance that your typewriter might be better than you think it is. Right, it If you be. give yourself a chance by learning the proper technique, using your finger strength, you know, working on your finger strength, going through a regimen, Absolutely. practicing, getting familiar... You know, if you sit down at your computer after having worked with your typewriter and you don't pound the keyboard... On your computer, yeah. you're doing something wrong. You haven't adapted to the yeah. typewriter. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Now it should, it should be a, a, a noticeable difference. And, right. And I and I dare say this: once you adapt to a particular typewriter's action and speed and key strength, you will find that churning out printed copy on it is a very satisfying thing to do. That's right. And that it becomes. It becomes almost automatic. You don't have to think about it when you're when you're used to that particular one machine. Pick yep. one that's in good condition. Don't get one that's beat or whipped or has parts jiggling out or ammunition falling out of it. Like that we or, yeah. <laughs> saw that. <coughs> now that's not to say that there isn't such a thing as a bad typewriter. There is. There are there bad are. typewriters out there. What's the worst typewriter on this island right well, now? Well, that one. <laughs> not, not this. Not the generation. No. This isn't the worst one? No, it's that one. Oh. So let's imagine <laughs> for a moment I was typing along on this thing and I was going pretty fast and I shifted. Oh, my. <laughs> it bounces when it shifts. That's a three bank, so it has to go up and down. Yeah, so I'm going to do a lot of shifting on this so typewriter. There's, there's three characters on each type slug, and every time I let go of this, let go of the caps, if I get a, a type slug up there before it's done bouncing, who knows where it's going to be. Yeah, so... You couldn't be fast on that if you tried. Yeah, yeah, that typewriter is actually so bad... That it was sold uh, as part of a typewriting course. And after you made a certain number of payments and sent in your uh, completed uh, 
typing lessons, they said, and then we send you a typewriter. Which, of course, is all, it's all a ruse. You're really at, you're buying a typewriter. Yep. But if they sold you the typewriter <laughs> first, <laughs> you'd, be, you'd, send you, it right you'd, you'd, you'd write a note that says, I can't believe you guys can sell these things. Or right. I couldn't believe what I got. Right. How do you get, <laughs> how can you do this? Yeah. No, those are actual <laughs> testimonials from those users. Are double entendres, yeah. I, I couldn't believe it when I used it. Yeah, and, and folks, there are typewriters out there that should be good typewriters that are, that are literally pounded out. Oh, yeah, worn out. Uh, yeah. There's a yeah. description in one of the manuals over there that talks about, uh, I think it's in one of the Ames repair manuals, talks about a typewriter that has been used by a heavy-handed typist. Yeah, yeah, yep. That has become a chronic skipper. Yep. And that, the term for those is pounded out. Well, yep. folks, you know, typewriters are back in the day when, as the Ames manual said, right after World War II, there were over 5,000 firms in the United States nationwide selling and servicing typewriters think about that think those about typewriters that. when they were rebuilt or or serviced and adjusted were warranted for anywhere between 90 days to one year to, so the typewriter you just pulled out of somewhere some barn or ravine or <laughs> wherever right. not only has it suffered degradation due to the environment but it hasn't been adjusted in x number of years and there's no telling what x is right what did they say the average service life of a standard machine was back then? Between they, one to three years before being pulled from the office for rebuilding or replacement. Right, and that means they're swapping out machines, you know, at the mo at the yeah. longest three years. So that's not yeah. a real long service life getting used continuously. Yeah, that's a that's a standard getting hammered on every right, day. Right, right. But but just think about that. And, and you don't know what's happened to the machine you've got in your hand. Nope, but there's, there's no telling. You can telling. tell when one's in good shape, when it's mechanically in good condition. Yep. You can see it, you can feel it. Yep. So Start these out are with just, a good one. Yeah, these are some things to think about when you're, when you're looking at a typewriter and saying, man, I, I just I can't find what I like or these don't seem to suit my touch. Maybe you need to do a little reset. You know, get, get one of those typing courses. Create some uh, strength or dr exercise drills for yourself. Yeah, get a spend some time getting familiar with the typewriter without spending that time trying to write the novel that you're trying to write. Right. Do not just type. Uh, now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their. That's country not going to help you. And say, "Well, this thing's junk," because you can't. You don't know that, no. in that in that length of time. Yeah. Yeah, and don't buy it just because it's pretty and black and shiny yep, like yep. that, you or you, you, you may be disappointed. Yep, so give it some time and give yourself some time and think about technique. A yep. lo the lost art of typing technique that goes hand in hand with printing letters and pulling them out. Yep. Okay, I hope, I hope we didn't hurt anybody. We're sorry, we tried to be Yeah, gentle. we tried to be gentle with that. <laughs> and, uh, we, we promise to help you in the future. Counseling's available so if you'd like just, it, if you'd uh, like to. <laughs> Feel free to yell at us in the comments. Or send us money. We'll or, or send us money and we'll stop, we'll stop producing <laughs> these 24-minute long videos berating, <laughs> berating you, the viewers. Okay? Now that you've been leveraged, uh, we'll catch you later. Have a nice night.